Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. Welcome into Culture Keys. I hope this finds you blessed, energized, ready to grow, ready to make deposits in your life that in the end um, make you more productive. We've been in a long series. I hope to finish this today on productivity. I'm entering or have entered this third quarter of my life, and my heart is desperate uh, to be productive in this third quarter. Just turned 50 years old, and I am inspired, maybe more than ever, to make sure that the next 15 years of my life are the most productive that I've ever spent. I ended last time with this thought, and I want to sow it into you again this morning. We're talking about productivity. Often, It is mundane chores and maintenance activities that become a huge part of our being productive. I read the scripture, Proverbs 28, 18, Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who guards his master will be honored. Why? Because little things matter. Just write that down for yourself today. Little things matter. Insignificant things matter become significant when they're not maintained appropriately. But maintenance work can be a challenge for us. Um, Those mundane, repetitive actions uh, can be things that slip through the tracks uh, because we all want to move forward. We want to go on to something else. Those repeated actions sometimes lose value or importance over time. And so because they've uh, been reduced in value and importance in our hearts, we tend to them less. And then you see the little things fall through the cracks and all of a sudden it really impacts our productivity in the end. And the challenge of maintenance work is this. Number one, it's not exciting. And all of us are looking for the thrill of something new or something big. And new things and big things seem to feed Uh, our lives with energy while those small, mundane, or maintenance tasks often drain us of energy. But watch this. It's the maintenance that keeps the trains running on time. Somebody's got to see to the little things. Somebody uh, has to make sure that the little things get done and that they get done with focus, that they get done uh, with excellence, Because the accumulation of these insignificant acts often create incredibly huge results, either positively or negatively. Um, I see it in my personal life and in my ministry all the time, uh, a lack of seeing to the little things. Um, Oftentimes, our staff, right? Man, when it's the big stuff, when it's the stuff people see, when it's the stuff that they like, when it's the stuff that matters to them or that they feel or deem is important, boy, they will see to it and they will uh, uh, apply great excellence in their work. But then when it's just the metronome stuff, the buttons you got to push every week, the I's you got to dot every week, the T's you have to cross every week, sometimes Either those don't get done because we've devalued them or they don't get done with the excellence and the focus and the attentiveness that make them productive. And so we've got to look at right, right the stuff that doesn't excite us. But in the end, if it's done with focus, attentiveness and excellence make a big difference. Uh, we can't let those things slip through the cracks. The second thing is maintenance work is often work that's unseen, right? Nobody knows who the maintenance guy is. Uh, And when you do, it means that something's usually broken, right? But write this down. Unseen does not mean unvaluable. Unseen does not mean unvaluable. We have to find value in the part we play in keeping the body whole and healthy. Um, I try to sow this thought into... Uh, our uh, volunteer staff, even though we don't like to use the word uh, volunteers, I like to use servant leaders. But uh, you look at the activity, you know, the people that clean the bathrooms, the people that keep the floors clean, the people that mow the grass, these are not upfront people. 
all of those activities are done when the crowd is not here. Uh, so often the people with the gifts on the platform or the people that stand out front, those are the people that we acknowledge. But can I tell you as a pastor, uh, some of the most important people to our organization are not people that ever step on the platform. They are quiet by nature. The gift that they have uh, would be unseen by most people. But I can tell you that their work in and on our ministry is invaluable, and without them, we could not do or be uh, who we are uh, in this season. Just because it's unseen does not mean it is unvaluable. We have to find value in the unseen part, and um, uh, we, we enjoy the fruit of a million unseen acts. Think of that. You enjoy the fruit of a million unseen acts. Uh, clean buildings, mown grass, rehearsed music, prepared lessons. These are all things unseen, but incredibly important. I would just urge you, and maybe this is something you need to write down and remind yourself of. I have to find value in the unseen act. All right. Thirdly, the challenge of maintenance work is it's often dirty work. Dishes are dirty. They're hard to dig but they are important because of what they carry. And the dirty work often carries significant loads. Someone has to be willing to do the dirty work. And a person that's willing to do what no one else will do will always be busy. Think about that. The person who will do what no one else will do, who's willing to pay the price no one else will pay, will always be busy. Let's not let, because it's dirty work, mean that it's work that we shouldn't do. Um, there's a lot of dirty work somebody's got to do. Our willingness to do it will ensure uh, that we're busy. Um, one of my employees tells me all the time, I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm sorry for this little thing that I've got, I need him to do, and he'll always tell me, Pastor, it's job secu security. Why? Because he's willing and able to do it, right? He has the gift to do it and the willingness to do it, and um, because he has that gift of willingness and ability, uh, he's got job security because he's the one willing to do it. Fourthly, um, the challenge of maintenance work is it's, mon it's often monotonous, right? It's the same thing over and over. And because it's something we do over and over again, as we've talked about, it seems to lose its value. Don't allow the mundane work that you perform to lose its value. Just because it's the same thing over and over does not mean that it's not important. And these are the things I'm talking about. Learning to lead ourselves in this way and certainly learning to lead the people uh, in our organizations in this. Uh, that just because it's something we do over and over uh, does not mean that it's not absolutely important to us reaping the harvest or being productive in the fashion that God wants us to be productive. You know what else I've found onto something a little bit new? I think it's possible to be productive without being a productivity guru. I'd much rather be productive than look productive. You know what? I think there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time trying to look productive. Um, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid that I worked harder at not working than at actually working. You ever know people like that? Right. They work harder at not doing something than they actually would if they if they put their mind to doing something. I'm not trying to look productive. I'm trying to get some work done. Looking the part and playing the part, I have found sometimes are two different things. There's nobody in the world that I love to play golf with more than my dad. But I'll have to admit my dad may be the worst golfer I've ever played with. He's just not very good. He's not good because he hasn't applied himself. He's athletic. Uh, he's capable. He's able. But it's just not something he would never go out and practice. And he may play two or three times a year uh, at the most. In some years, not at all. He's just not very good. But I can tell you when he gets out to the golf course, son, he looks like a professional golfer. And if you don't watch him swing or hit a ball before the round and you watch him walk on the first tee, I can tell you this right now, you probably say that guy right there is, I can just tell you he's an amazing golfer. But in that sometimes the, the way we choose to live our life, we show up looking the part, but the reality is we 
we're just not very good at being productive. We work hard at looking like it, but not as hard at actually getting the work done. And, um, you know, just because you can hold the drumsticks don't mean you can play the drums. There is a big difference. And the Pharisees were a lot this way in the Bible. They were consumed with an outward appearance, but unconcerned with the inward condition. I want to read a verse of Scripture that I'm sure you'll have to muse on. There's no way you'll catch all of it just in our short time uh, together today. But it's out of Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 through 26. And I'm going to read them to you because it talks about four things. It says this, Four things on earth are small, but are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they provide their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a people not mighty, yet they make their homes in the cliffs. The locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. And the lizard you can take in your hands, and yet it resides in king's palaces. Now let me take these, all four of them, because all four of these animals talked about here in Proverbs 30 have something to teach us. Firstly, the ant. The ant teaches us that strength is not measured in size, but in effectiveness. In pastoring, I've found this. Size doesn't always determine impact. Little can be much when God's in it, and when we're willing to work for it. You look at the ant, not very big in size, can be crushed underfoot. But oh, what an army of ants can accomplish when they're in sync and working towards the same goal. And when I look at the history of my ministry, we were effective even when we were, we were small. The second one was the rock badger. The rock badger teaches us that our stature in the kingdom is not measured by, measured by our height, but by where we make our home. The high places are the hardest places to build, and yet that's the place where the rock badger builds his house. And let me just insert this. When you make a residence out of a prayer closet, you've built a home in a high place. And some of the most mighty people in the kingdom are incredibly small in stature. Do not allow your size to diminish the impact that you have the capability of making. Thirdly was the locust. The locust teaches us that self-discipline is the measure of greatness. Your greatest leadership accomplishment will always be in how you lead yourself. Here's what that scripture says. The locusts don't have a king, and yet they discipline themselves to walk in rank. Nobody's telling them what to do, and yet they all find their place in the program and the plan. Boy, I wish I had a church full of locusts. People that just find their place and are willing and able to walk in that place. God has given us godly authority figures that help us build a fence around our lives until we have the ability and discipline to build our own fences around ourselves. Because when you can discipline yourself to live a godly life of productivity without anybody watching, you've reached a true measure of greatness. And then lastly, the lizard. The lizard teaches us that insignificant things have a way of sneaking into very significant places. Right? The lizard doesn't have a home, and yet he resides in king's palaces. Small acts done with godly character always find their way into the court of the king. It's a whole lot easier to make it into the king's palace when you're small and insignificant than it is when you're too visible. When we're willing to make ourselves small, we gain entrance into God's very best. And it's when we try too hard to make ourselves big in the eyes of others that access becomes difficult. Oh, I hope some of this has helped you. And I can't wait to meet you right back here next week on Culture Keys. 